Is it on? Is it working? I think so. Uh, Chris and I are officially back from Italy, and I thought it would be a great time to do another catch up on life. Europe was magical. Don't get me wrong. We were gone for two weeks. I bawled my eyes out when we left the house. And over the next several days, about four or five days, the guilt really stuck with us. And then by the time we got to Taormina in Sicily, not all of it, but a lot of the guilt had subsided, which I was happy about because I knew my children were okay, that they were well looked after by Miss Allison, and that they were having the time of their lives. I mean, you guys, they went to Disneyland, the zoo, SeaWorld. They saw grandmas, grandpas, families, play dates. They went to three different pumpkin patches. They had an absolute ball. Miss Allison gave me her honest to God review after all said and done. And she said those two weeks went by so fast. The kids had a great time. They were super present with her. They were super present with us when we FaceTimed every other day. Just had a really great time overall. Honestly, I don't know if Chris and I will take another two week trip in the future without them. Two weeks did feel a little long, but I think right around that seven to 10 day mark is like a lot better. Some of our highs during the trip, wearing multiple Chiano and Multicino and walking through these tiny medieval cities, trying local cuisine, exploring a lot of the local markets, just wonderful. Hotel in Tuscany was a medieval castle and fortress. Stunning. There was only maybe like 12 rooms, so it was very quiet, very easy going. Staying at the San Domenico Palace, which is a Four Seasons Hotel in Taormina in Sicily, was out of this world. Yes, it's the same hotel from White Lotus, but I have been a travel enthusiast, specifically in the luxury travel market, well before COVID, back when I was in my hospitality career. When I found out that San Domenico Palace was a Four Seasons and it was within our budget of points and cash, I knew that's where we absolutely had to stay and it was the best decision ever. A really sweet moment was when we were checking in at the front desk, the assistant general manager came out, greeted us and actually said, we have been waiting for your arrival. I personally follow you guys on TikTok and Instagram. I knew that you guys were coming to Taramina, but I had no idea you were staying with us. She gifted us um, some cute little Four Seasons backpacks for the kiddos with colored pencils, coloring books, a custom teddy bear to the entire team at Taramina. Thank you. More specifically, Megan and Raquel. Love you both. Cannot wait to be back. Finally, Paris was, it was so timeless and it was so beautiful. It was fall. It wasn't super crowded. The private tour of the Louvre was amazing. And I must say this, I, I think a lot of people thought that <laughs> the entire Louvre shut down for us to have a completely private tour. And um, I apologize if that's how it came out. Um, the private tour was that we had our own guide and it was just the two of us. One of those larger tours where you have to wear the headphones and the little flag waving around in the air that you have to follow. She studied the arts. It was so valuable to have her. What's also nice is that she kind of um, tailored it to our needs and our interests so she didn't overwhelm us with so much information. Um, and of course, in Paris, I surprised Miss Allison with the Louis Vuitton bag she had told me about months prior that I had cleverly asked about without giving it away so that way it would be a nice surprise for her. I also got myself a little something something. You wanna see? This is um, a beautiful, I would say dark navy blue. It has a similar style as the one I had before with the flap to fit my phone, um, but it, this one's much bigger. So now I can carry my wallet, I can carry my car keys, I can carry my sunglass case with my sunglasses. This was my little purchase for myself. And maybe some sandals from Hermes. <laughs> I wanted to get something special for Chris, but he wasn't really interested in anything and we weren't about to just buy something just to buy something. On to a topic that a lot of you have been asking about, potty training. So I wanted to go back a little bit and clarify, not that I need to, but I just feel like it might just help with, with the overall story. Chris and I have been introducing the potty to Brecon and London for the last several months, um, probably the last three months or so, um, and more just as an introduction to it to kind of get them comfortable and to make them more aware of where potty is going to transfer to. We bought the potty stools, the child seats on top of the toilet, and then when we left for Italy, Miss Allison pretty much started the potty training full time. I obviously connected with her and I wanted to set her up for success before we left. So I made sure to have ordered all the big kid underwear for both Brecken and London. I got a port potty for the downstairs bathroom so that way there were two toilets available in case both of them needed to go at the same time. Traveling potty for when they were out and about and a slew of prizes. Miss Allison really wanted to present them with a specific gift 
or a prize, especially in the beginning when they would go potty on the toilet. I set them up with a lot of small different gifts, everything from Paw Patrol to Princess to Legos to cars to puzzles. She got these potty training tracking boards that were Paw Patrol themed and they came with a ton of stickers and they had all these different categories. So every time that they would go potty, they would get a sticker and then they would get a prize. Not saying that that's something that everyone should do because obviously I spent quite a bit of money stacking up on all of the prizes and all the supplies before we left, but I wanted it to be as successful and as convenient for Miss Allison, and I wanted it to reflect how she wanted to implement the training while we were gone. Two weeks later, the kids are still not 100% trained. London is like 99.8% there. She communicates so well anytime she needs to go to the bathroom. She wears big girl underwear underneath her PJs or clothes all day. She does not wear a diaper anymore, and she does so well at night. We have sort of trained her to make sure that if she wakes up in the middle of the night and she has to go, she just looks up at the camera and says, Dada, Daddy, I have to go potty. I have the camera on next to my bed, so I hear her and I get up to make sure that we can relieve her. Brecken is not quite ready for being diaper free at nighttime. Again, Chris and I continue to follow what Miss Allison has implemented over the last two weeks to make sure that we do exactly what she taught so that way that we set the kids up for success and that we're not deterring or changing things up this late in the game. It's actually Halloween today and um, Brecken unfortunately has been sick since Tuesday. He had a fever on Tuesday, he had a fever on and off yesterday, um, so we are not going trick-or-treating this year but to make it super fun because he's feeling a lot better today, no more fever, um, hardly coughing, has a little bit of a runny nose, London still feels great, they have Halloween themed clothes that I got them last month. And before Miss Allison leaves this afternoon, she's going to do both of their hairs to kind of style for Halloween. And we're gonna go ahead and give candy out as a family. We've been prepping them the last couple of days since we realized Brecken was sick. And they are so excited. <laughs> they have a little phrase that they like to say, happy Halloween, boo. And then they'll wait for the kids to say trick or treat. And then they'll exchange the the passing of the candy to their bags. Mm. I find it funny because a lot of the commentary that comes in mostly on TikTok and Instagram used to be sort of negative and now it's crazy positive for the most part. But you know what? People on Facebook, they have an opinion, man. And oh my gosh, do I care? No. Anyone that has an opinion about me or my life or what I'm wearing or what I do is none of my business. I just, I just don't give a fuck. Happy Halloween and be safe out there.